Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, and thank you for joining us tonight on our virtual tour. Um, you just had a, a brief uh, shot there of um, drone footage that we had filmed earlier in the year, um, just to give you an idea of the size of the campus from a, an aerial view. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, those of you that um, are watching through YouTube, um, please feel free to comment in the chat box. I will keep my eye on it the best I can. Um, and for those of you watching through Zoom, um, if you have any questions um, at any point, please do use the chat box. I will look at the chat box at the end. Um, so if you've got any questions, please pop them in there and I'll do my best to answer them at the end. Also, what I'm gonna do is spend about 15 or 20 minutes um, just giving you a, a guided virtual tour of the general areas of the college. So it's most of the communal areas and facilities that are open to all students on the site when you're here with us. Um, so if anybody's got any specific subject areas they would like to see, um, please pop them in the chat box um, towards the end uh, and I will visit as many as I can with the time we have. Um, we've got until about seven o'clock, um, but um, so uh, I'll do my best to get everything in for everybody. So just before we start, uh, I'll just give you a quick um, a bit of info and history on the college. So NES got opened in 1953. Um, it opened originally as your technical college um, and it cost £250,000 to build um, back then. Um, it changed its name to North East Surrey College um, of Technology, aka NESCOT, in 1975. We now offer further education for school leavers, so that's our 16 to 18 provision. Um, university level education, apprenticeships, adult part-time courses, and free distance learning courses. So all the areas you see um, in this initial bit of the tour, they're accessible to all students, no matter what course or level of course you are studying with us. Uh, throughout the year, we roughly have about 8,000 um, students across all those areas. Um, some of the areas you'll see today um, will look much newer than others, and that's because over the last few years, um, NESCO has spent over £50 million pounds, um, of improvements around the campus. These include the areas such as the Skills Park, which we'll see in just a moment. Um, it also allows us to create commercial enterprises that will help with revenue generation, uh, refitting of classrooms, IT investment, uh, and most recently, a new secure car park and canteen area. So without further ado, I will get started on the virtual tour. Um, so you can at any point, if you wish, um, after this, um, go onto our website um, and you can have a look at this virtual tour um, sort of at your, own, at your own speed, if you wish. And uh, you'll see along the way, there are lots of um, buttons and things to click and videos to watch that will give you a bit more information about certain areas. So please feel free in your own time to go ahead and do that. So this area we're actually sort of virtually standing in at the moment, this is the staff car park, um, which is primarily, primarily used by staff. Students um, would rarely use it. Um, you'll use the large car park at the end of this road up here. Down this pathway here, we have the old reception area, um, which is also where security are based. If you have any concerns, you can always pop to see them. Um, anyone planning to drive um, to Nescot, you'll need to visit them on your first day um, to get yourself a student car park sticker. Um, and anyone that, um, if you study particular courses, you'll more than likely use this entrance if you're based sort of in this part of the building um, or behind here, um, which is mostly construction. Um, so if you're based on any of those areas, you will primarily probably use this entrance. Um, if you get the train from your east station, um, you can't see it on here, um, but there is a turnstile gate sort of halfway up um, from the station, um, which you can access through um, with your student pass. And if you come from your west station, um, you'll see it in a minute, but there is a white pedestrian gate here that you'll use to access um, the campus. Uh, anyone driving will access it from the far corner there. So this first um, building down ahead of us here, that is the Adrian Mann Theatre, um, AKA the AMT. Um, so this area is used for a lot of guest speakers and workshops that we have in throughout the year. Um, you might also go there for a principal's talk at the beginning of the year or during the year, um, if there is a need for that. 
Um, it's also used by local amateur dramatic groups who hire it out um, in various evenings and weekends for performances, which of course, um, as are the general public, students and staff are welcome to go to those as well. Um, we will just have a quick look in. So this is from inside. So we were just out here through these doors. Um, so this is the Adrian Mann Theatre. If you plan on studying performing arts with us, um, then you may use this area as well. There are other areas that you'll use, but you may also use this area for some of your performances. So if we head back out, I'll just go outside just so you can see where exactly it is that we've just come from. So we were just standing up here. So if you follow this path down, there's the Adrian Mann Theatre. You walk along, you get to the Nescott Skills Park and main reception. If you carry on going, you will get to the car park area at the back, which goes all the way down sort of the length of the, uh, of the campus. Um, so it's loads of space for anyone planning to drive in. So the majority of staff and visitors and a lot of students use this main entrance here. Um, it's called the Skills Park, otherwise known as main reception. As you head in, you can see this is a very modern building. It was only built a few years ago. Uh, this is part of the recent investments that we've had into the college. So immediately as you come through the door, on the right-hand side, you have our advice and, guidance, advice and guidance team. They are the department that would have been dealing with your application up until, well, up until you enroll with us. Um, so if you ever, uh, ever have any queries about an application, enrollment, um, your course, or if you want some careers advice, you can pop into Advice and Guidance and have a chat with them. Uh, and if they're not available immediately, they can book in an appointment. We also do have two qualified careers advisors. Um, so anyone who is reaching the end of their course or any time really, um, you can pop in there and book an appointment with one of our careers advisors and then give you some helpful tips and useful information about how to um, you know, improve your CV or how to go about landing that job that you um, desire. Obviously, we've got the main reception desk here. And as we carry on down through the skills park, um, the next stop is our innovation salon. So this is a professional hair salon. Uh, this is one of the many college um, commercial enterprises that you, you'll see as we go around. Um, and it's one of those, that we, uh, the reason we have it is to bring in um, additional revenue. Um, there is also um, sometimes opportunities for anyone studying hair or beauty perhaps do a bit of work experience um, and you may even do some of your lessons in here um, and it will help um, set you up for the, the feel of a real salon when you um, leave us and go into that industry. Uh, we've also got the business centre here. So the business centre are the team who you'd be best to contact if you've got any queries or wish to do an apprenticeship. Um, if you head to um, speak to them, and they can organize um, and assist you with your apprenticeship application. So as we continue through, um, you'll notice that we have these barriers. Now we have these barriers here and at the old reception um, and for other entry points onto the site where there's not a building, there will be a turnstile gate. Obviously, the reason we have these are for security reasons. It's so that we can um, manage the people that are on site. Um, so obviously, the only people that are welcome on site um, on a daily basis are sort of staff and students. And, um, and then if we've got any visitors, they'll sign in at reception and they'll need to have a pass to get through as well. Um, so it is important um, every time you come into college, you have your pass. So like mine around my neck. Um, you'll have um, that given to you when you come and enroll um, and then you need to bring that with you. If you do forget it, um, you may be able to borrow one once or twice, um, but if any more than that, um, it'll be deemed as lost and you'll need to purchase yourself a new one. So once you go through these barriers and you see this staircase here, so we, if we wander down that staircase, we get to an area that we call the Undercroft Cafe. So if I just pan round, as you can see these stairs here, that's basically the bottom of where we just were. So you come in this door here, and then on your left-hand side, this is the cafe. Um, so this is one of um, three 
food premises on site that you can purchase breakfast, lunch or dinner. And they're usually open all day and you've got all this additional seating in here for you as well, which you are obviously welcome to use at any time. At the moment, a lot of the areas are sort of um, specific to certain curriculum areas due to the, um, the bubble system that's in place. But hopefully by September, um, we won't have those measures in place. And there is a microwave there that is for communal use should you need to borrow it. So as you, if you come through the door, if you were to carry on down, there is a pathway here. I know it doesn't quite look like it, but there is one there. If you carry on down and outside, um, you'll reach our osteopathy clinic. So our osteopathy clinic, this is another one of our commercial enterprises that's open to the public. And it gives osteopathy students the opportunity to gain some real life experience of treating members of the public. So it is open to the public. Then the rates are reduced to reflect the fact that it is um, people studying and students doing the, uh, the sessions. So if anyone does have any ambition to perhaps, if you're planning on studying sport and then you want to see uh, perhaps peel off into something a bit more um, specific and you want to study osteopathy, you can do that with us here. This is one of many higher education courses that we offer at the college. Um, by higher education, I mean university level qualifications. Um, I'll point out some other areas as well that um, those university level students have access to as part of being um, a higher education student with us. Um, if you come out of these doors, if you turn right, that will take you back to the undercroft where we just were. If you come out and go left, this will take you to our refectory, um, otherwise known as the canteen. So this is where you'll get the majority of your breakfast and lunches probably. Um, it's the largest um, food outlet that we have. And you can see it's got lots of spacing in here as well. Um, usually the tables are a lot closer together and there's a lot more chairs, but um, at the moment they're obviously spaced out um, for obvious reasons. But this is open usually from about eight o'clock in the morning until about two o'clock in the afternoon. So anything after two o'clock, you need to go either to the Undercroft Cafe that I just showed you, or which we'll go to in a minute. In this corner here, there is another door that leads up to an area called Starbucks. Um, just before we leave the refectory, out here you can see this sort of dome-shaped canopy. Canopy. Um, that is basically an outside eating area. There's a grass patch here as well. So as the weather at the moment is getting a bit nicer, we can hopefully start to use that area a bit more for lunches and breaks. So here's the door I was just mentioning about leads to Starbucks. So you've got the undercroft that's open all day. And then if you head to Starbucks, just up the corridor, um, this is another area that is open um, pretty much all day until about four or five o'clock. Um, this area is also known as the FE Common Room. Um, so if anyone says Starbucks or FE Common Room, this is the area they mean. This is another area that was um, recently revamped. So it's got an ex uh, all this additional seating for you to use um, at breaks and lunches and in between lessons. You'll see just across the way here, there is another room. And that area is the HE Common Room. So at the moment, it, um, when we did this, um, when we took the photos of this toy, it was, it was set out like a classroom and still is at the moment. Um, this is because we needed the additional space. Um, by September, hopefully we're back to normal and this will be back into more of a, a common room setting. Um, but this is exclusively for higher education students. So anyone not studying at university level or above, um, they will not have access to this room. So it's just a, a private area for those studying one of those courses. So this is just one of the buildings. Um, if we go to the main building and we go to an area called the Learning Resource Center, um, the LRC for short, also known as the library. Um, when you start here in September, you'll discover that um, few areas have different names as, as the names have changed over the years. So depending on who you ask, they may call it a different area. Um, it doesn't take too long to work out where they mean, they often mean, um, the same thing. So if anyone says the LRC, Learning Resource Centre or Library, this is the area that they mean. So this is in the main college building or the largest college building. And this is open um, all day, usually from about eight o'clock in the morning through till um, six, sometimes seven o'clock in the evening. 
uh, and I believe they're due to start having it open at weekends as well. So this area is accessible for all students. You can use it at any time. So if you've got if you've got break or lunch or you've got a gap in between lessons and you need to catch up on some work or you just want to do some research or you just want to come in um, sit down, um, grab yourself a book uh, and have a read or do some research, then by all means you can do so. Um, all these books are available um, to borrow. So just like a normal library, they'll just scan your student card and you can borrow it for a week or two at a time. I think you can borrow up to about 10 items at a time. Um, and yes, just like any library, there are late fees. So um, please do ensure you return them. It's easy enough to extend it as well. You can just, um, you can contact the LRC by email, phone, or you can just pop in and see anyone at the one of these desks here and they'll extend it for you. Um, on the right hand side, so this is the main door you will come in to use the uh, LRC. On the right hand side, as soon as you come in, there is a, a quiet study room here. So anybody who needs um, silence um, in order to study, you, you can use that room. Here we have a repro service. Um, that is a, basically a printing service. So if you need laminating, binding or any sort of fancy printing done, um, if you go in there, there's a small charge for that service. Uh, next along, we have our student finance team. So anyone who, who needs any support financially, whether that be with travel, um, with lunches or with kit. Um, a lot of our courses have a specific kit or uniform that you need. For example, if you're studying hair and beauty, you'll need like a tunic and you need some equipment um, to go with that. If you're studying motor vehicle, you need overalls, boots, you'll need some tools. Um, so some courses can be a bit more expensive than others. Um, so if for, uh, you know, for whatever reason you need the support, that's absolutely fine. Speak to our student finance team at enrollment or in advance. I'll supply email addresses at the end for you to contact certain departments. Um, you can get in touch with them and they can discuss um, how we may be able to support you there. There's a mixture of items available. So I think it's DVDs. You can see some graphic novels here. Um, there are plenty of other fiction and non-fiction books and textbooks as well. Um, so textbooks can be quite expensive, so um, you can always borrow them if needs be, if you don't need it for the whole, for the whole academic year. So this room here, um, you can sort of read it there, it says HE Adult Study Area. So again, this is an area for those that are studying higher education with us. So whether that be a uni uh, so at university level qualifications, um, you have your own private study area to use here as well. Um, I would recommend that um, at some point after, after this, whether it be later on today or over the weekend, if you do have a look at the virtual tour for yourself, um, the LRC has even more that you can see. Um, if you was to click on this, our resources here, um, they've actually got a, another sort of 360 version um, which goes into a lot more detail about everything that's in here. Um, so if you're particularly interested in that, um, I would suggest that you um, have a look at that. So the next area we're going to go to is an area called the Seasons Hub, which um, for context is through these doors and there it is. Um, so imagine we've just gone through these doors here. Um, you've got uh, a bit of a seating area here. And as I whiz round, there's some more tables and chairs there as well. So this area is called the Seasons Hub. It's pretty much used by our foundation students. Um, foundation students are those students who are studying um, a qualification um, below a level one. Um, and on their course, they'll be studying and learning to um, hopefully either go on to employment after a few years um, or study um, a level one course or higher with us um, in, a, in two or three years time. Um, there's various areas here. We've got the Seasons Cafe, which is technically um, the fourth um, food outlet that is open to you. This is usually open once, maybe twice a week. Um, uh, we can have a quick look in there. It's, it's got a, fit, uh, a few chairs and tables in there. Um, through here is just a kitchen. That's where they prepare all the food. So all the food is prepared and served. Um, and all the money is taken by those foundation students, just teaching them some extra um, additional skills that will help me go on to help them um, later on in life with employment and any other courses. Um, they've also got a rather large um, one of their classrooms here. So you can see there's lots of different um, drawings on the wall 
um, and lots of different areas they can do. And there's sort of a whole host of board games and stuff there as well that helps them um, with their maths, English, and sort of problem solving techniques. Um, so anyone who's planning to study foundations, I recommend you have a look at this uh, tour as well. Um, and you can come in here, there's a few other rooms as well, and you can watch the video, we'll just give you a bit more information on the area. So next up, uh, we have our sports facilities. So as a student of Nescot, you have access to our gym. Um, again, the gym is open to the public, um, although it is primarily used by staff and students um, for Students, it is £12 a month. Um, it's not a contract, you pay your £12 one month. If you don't want to go the next month, you don't pay your £12. Um, and it's as simple as that. You go online to pay it. it, they don't take it out. It's not a direct debit or anything like that. So you physically have to pay it yourself. So if you really don't want to go anymore, you literally just don't pay. So you, you don't go on, you go on the website to pay, you, or you come into the sports hall and pay. If you don't want to do it anymore, then you don't pay. Um, Hopefully you can see from these images that the gym um, equipment and floor um, does look relatively new. That's because it is. Um, we completely refurbed um, all the equipment and the floor um, back in Feb 19. Um, so it was used um, a lot for a year and then unfortunately we went into lockdown. So over the last um, 12 months or so, it's um, other than the rare opening that we've been allowed to do, um, it's not been used a huge amount other than by students. So if you're studying sports or public services and foundations use it from time to time, um, then you'll spend, um, particularly sport and public services, you'll spend probably quite a lot of time in the gym. But as you can see, like I say, the equipment's all pretty much still as new as when we got it a couple of years ago. So just uh, through the netting and down, um, obviously you'll use the stairs, don't jump over. Um, you've got the sports hall, um, much like probably a sports hall that you have at school. Um, primarily used by sports, public services, a bit by foundations. Um, and evenings and weekends is hired out to local sports clubs and teams and uh, whoever else may need a sports hall for whatever reason. We also have the mugger. That stands for multi-use games area. Uh, I find the easiest way to describe it is as an outdoor sports hall. Um, as you can see, it very much looks like a sports hall. It's got slightly different flooring, um, so it's not grass, but it sort of resembles grass a lot more than a, a sports hall would. Uh, again, used by sports, public services uh, and foundations, um, but also um, that we have enrichment activities, um, which are sort of extracurricular clubs and stuff that you can join. Um, so if you're into sport, there's football, basketball, um, tennis, badminton, hockey, they sort of change term by term. Um, and, but we also have non-sport related um, enrichment activities like comic book club, um, board game club, chess club. Um, some departments have their own. So I think creative media do like a film club. Um, and I think English do a book club. So there's a variety of clubs. Um, just keep an eye out on the college's social media channels and on uh, the internal app that you'll find out more about when you join us called Nescoms, um, you get a lot of information through that. Uh, and then just all the last area is the sports pitches at the back. So most of what you see here is, is Nescots and some of the areas aren't, but the majority of these pitches here are Nescot. Again, sport will use these a lot. Public services and uh, foundations may use it a bit. Um, it's unlikely if you want any other course. It, you will use it too much. Okay, so that is a bit of a whistle stop tour around um, the generic, the general areas of the college that are accessible to everybody. Um, I hope that that gives you a bit more of an insight into what it's like at the college. I know it's not the same as coming in person, um, but it hopefully gives you a bit of an idea for those who haven't been able to visit us yet um, over the last year. On that note, we do have an in-person event coming up, um, all being well with the, the roadmap out of uh, lockdown, um, which is due to take place on Saturday, the 26th of June. Um, if you go to our website uh, at the end of this, you will see all the information on there. Um, registration is required. There are two slots that you can pick from, either between 10 and 12 or between 12 and 2. 
Um, so head over to the website after this and I'll put a link in the chat at the end um, that you can also access that too. But like I say, registration is required and all the details can be found on our website. As promised at the beginning, um, now is the opportunity. Um, I, know, I know there's some uh, questions going on in the chat. Um, so if anybody has any particular areas um, that they wish to see, any particular curriculum subject areas, please do pop them in the chat box. I will do my best um, to get through them. We've got about half an hour or so, so please do feel free to suggest anywhere and I will do my best to work my way through that. If you've got any questions about anything else as well, please do pop them in. I may um, not have the answer for you, um, but I, like I say, at the end, I will supply you with some email addresses to contact. Someone's asked to see children and early years. So all these areas here, that these, these will cover anyone studying childcare, health and social care, early years at university level, um, healthcare play at university level. Uh, there's also a couple of labs that you may use on these courses as well. Uh, maybe if you do access to nursing, you might also um, use these areas as well. Um, so one of these is just um, a pretty generic classroom. Unfortunately, there's nothing too exciting for you. Um, this second room doesn't actually look like how it does anymore. This is now actually a nurse, uh, a makeshift nursery. Um, so anyone who studies childcare, you'll be in a sort of a makeshift nursery environment. Um, I'll show you our actual nursery in a minute as well, which you'll um, potentially have some access to as well. But like I say, so this at the moment, although it looks like just like a classroom, um, believe me, it is um, now a makeshift nursery. Uh, a lot of, well, majority of the rooms do have computers in, the last couple we saw didn't, but maybe because the childcare um, courses don't really require it, but the majority of our classrooms will have computers. And depending on if you're doing any of the sort of creative media courses or anything like that, then you'll have Mac suites that I'll show you later on um, that you'll have access to to use. So there's lots of workstations, so you should pretty much all the time have your own computer to be working on there. Um, and then these are the two labs that we have. So someone's asked, when do the new students start for health and social care? Um, I can't give you an exact date because timetables haven't been confirmed yet, but the start of term is usually the first week of September. Um, so it'll be the Monday or the Tuesday of that week is usually the, the first um, day of term. So uh, just check the calendar. So that will be probably the week of the 6th of September is most likely gonna be the start of term. But when you enrol at the college over the summer, you'll get given a timetable in advance. So you'll know um, when you need to come in. Um, but it will be around that first full week in September. Um, so someone's asking um, if they have to pay for courses when I go to college. Um, that very much depends on who you are and what previous qualifications you have, what qualification it is you want to study. Um, obviously, if you're 16 to 18 and you want to study at the college, then the, you know, the courses are free, education is free for you um, for the vast majority of courses. Um, if you're an adult looking to do a part-time course, um, depending on your previous qualifications, um, you, there is a likely that you'll need to pay. Uh, and obviously, if you're doing any of the university level courses, they come with a cost. Um, which you can get a student loan for. But um, if uh, depending on what course it is, I suggest you get in touch with the, the advice team um, and ask them um, more specifically, um, and they'll give you they'll give you a gal they'll be able to give you a hey, definite answer. Um, from how many hours will we study? Again, this very much depends on the course. Um, so if you're planning to study. Um, So if you're, planning to study, if you're doing a full-time course, for example, you'll be here for probably about three and a half days a week. 
um, possibly four days a week, possibly even five days a week, depends on the course, but usually about three and a half days a week. If you're doing a part-time course, that might just be a couple of evenings a week, might be a, a, a day at a weekend. Um, if you're doing university level again, they'll vary from you know two and a half, three and a half, four days a week. So it, it does very much vary depending on your course. But if you're just doing 16 to 18 provision, um, then it'll be about four, three and a half to four days a week. But again, you'll get your timetable in September. Um, someone's asking about um, they've previously registered and they're having struggling to apply for level three. Um, I, I don't know the exact um, uh, issue that you, you're having there. If it's just to apply, you can do that on the website. If there's something else that's um, for some reason stopping you from applying, please contact our advice and guidance team um, and they will be able to get in touch with you. I'll supply uh, an email for the advice team at the end of this session, okay? And you can get in touch with them and they'll be able to help you specifically with that. Um, so someone's asked, what uh, does a, a typical timetable look like specifically for HE? Um, again, they, they do vary, but um, for HE, you'll be you'll probably be spending about average three days, might be a little bit less, might be a little bit more. Um, most lessons in a day last around 90 minutes, um, and you would have one, two, three, possibly, you could have up to four lessons in a day. Some days you might only have one, some days you might only have two, et cetera. Um, so it does vary, but you'll have, they usually obviously try and group it together so you're not sort of having one in the morning and then one not until the evening um but you'll find out when you enroll and get your timetable um, someone's asked to see the catering kitchen so we'll, we'll head on over to them so anyone studying catering at the college um we have two kitchens that look identical so i'll only show one um but these were recently refurbished only a few years ago um, so you can see they all still look pretty modern and new. Um, you've got the big screen at the front here for the teacher, and you'll notice that there's a screen above each workstation so that you can see exactly what the teacher is showing you from the front there. So you see we've got all these individual workstations, so anyone studying, you'll have your own sort of work area um, for each lesson. Like I say, we've got two of these kitchens that look uh, exactly the same. Now, there are some other classrooms along the corridor, but they are just that, just classrooms. Um, but there you are, that is the catering kitchens. Um, someone's asked to see carpentry. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do whilst I'm there, because it's all under one thing. I'll just go through all the construction areas. So anyone who interested in carpentry, electrical, plumbing, gas, plastering, or brick, um, keep your eyes peeled over the next few minutes. So we've got, um, this is one of, I think, three carpentry works or possibly even four carpentry workshops, all very large. Um, you can see it's two stories. So you've got the upstairs area as well. It looks like they're doing some sort of roofing here, I think, I'm no expert, but it looks like roofs to me. Um, and if we go here, you can go upstairs. So like I say, this is only one of the workshops. Um, we have plenty of other workshops. So there is absolutely acres of room. Um, for everyone to be able to maximize um, your time with us. Um, so down the road from carpentry, we have electrical. So again, you can see these individual bays here. This is in the newest building, the BEB building, which is the Built Environment Building, um, which is only built a few years ago. And we have another workshop for electrical as well. And you can see there's individual bays there uh, and lots of workstations for everybody to work at. Um, next is plumbing. So anyone looking to study plumbing, again, you can see the, the size of this building and it's got an upstairs as well. So you can see down the bottom here, you've got all these individual bays. And if we go upstairs, you'll see just the true extent of the amount of bays that we do have for everybody to use. So you can see the whole wall is pretty much lined um, with workstations. Um, um, this is the, the biggest plumbing workshop and there is another one as well. 
So we've also got the gas. Um, this is just one of the classrooms for gas. But obviously the gas, you'll, any practical work, you'll be in that plumbing workshop that we just saw. Um, but this is just one of the classrooms for anyone doing uh, gas courses, which is primarily part-time courses, which are already qualified gas engineers that need to update their qualifications or a new bit of legislation has come out that they need to um, study on, then they just come and do that with us for a few weeks. Um, we've also got plastering. So you can see some lovely placed work there. Uh, that's one of the workshops. Uh, we've got a slightly larger workshop here. It looks like a little mini town somewhere in a desert, but uh, um, and we also have another area as well. So plenty of space for anyone who's wanting to come and do plastering. And the last one, we've got brickwork. Um, so this is only one work, there's only one workshop for brick, but it's a very large workshop. You can see there's all sorts of walls all over the place. Um, there's usually a, a roof arch being made at some point. Oh, there it is, there we go. Um, so you've got this very large workshop here for brickwork. And um, whilst we're on construction, I will pop across to motor vehicle. So anyone planning to study motor vehicle, you will spend pretty much all of your time in the motor center. The motor set center consists of this garage that you see in front of you now, um, multiple bays, all kitted out like you would get in a garage. So we prepare you to go and work in the industry so you don't feel, um, so when you go into a garage, it doesn't feel too alien to you. You should hopefully be used to roughly to the layout and the tools and how all the kit works. Um, so you have um, this area here. Um, you've also got a little classroom in here. So we go down a corridor and there we are. Um, this is your theory classroom. So obviously you'll spend a lot of time doing practical, but there is with every course, a bit of theory that also needs to be done. Uh, and that is where you'll spend most of your time for motor vehicle. Uh, catering, we've seen animal studies. Okay, let's head across to animal. So at the, if you were here at the beginning, you would have seen um, the video, uh, the short video that I played, which was of drone footage, which was of the whole campus. Um, you might have wondered what all that green space was and why we were so zoomed out. That's because that was the farm. Um, so the farm is spread over 12 acres of land. Um, we have this bit at the top end, or about halfway down the farm, which is the stables. There's usually some donkeys hanging around, a couple of horses. Uh, and this little pen is where they transport the sheep and get them sheared and fixed up. Uh, and uh, any work that I need to do with them there. If we go to the farm, so you can see here the vast area that it covers. I think that might be a donkey there. Uh, we've got goats, sheep, cows, and pigs um, as some of the larger animals. So you can see, so we've just basically walked from up there and you go around the corner, it goes, stretches all the way down there. This is the main road along here. Um, and this car park sort of is pretty much there. So you can see that this whole area basically goes the whole length of the college grounds. So it goes all the way to this back tree line here. Uh, the sports fields that we saw earlier are behind this tree line there. So also on the farm, as you go back down, so you go back through these gates here, past the stables and you're on a path. This will take you to the ACU, which is the animal care unit. This is where we house a lot of our smaller animals. So we've got rabbits. Um, you can see these little flaps at the back here, like cat flaps. Um, they go off into larger area runs outside the back um, that the rabbits have access to from time to time. So if we just go along the corridor, we go to the rodent room. Um, a clue is in the name. This is rats, mice, and other things that fall into the rodent category. And then the next room down the corridor is the exotics room. This um, you can see is sort of still being under construction. Um, in here, we have a very large, uh, uh, very large chameleon, um, and uh, he's a, he's a recent addition to us. Um, these are being built, I believe, for the snakes that we currently have. Uh, I think there might be some snakes going in there as well that we already do have. I thought that was the one there for a minute then, but it's not. It's a hose pipe. Um, 
so you'll see on the farm whenever you if you do come and visit that there it always seems to be an area under construction they're always building new areas trying to get new animals in um to give the students the most diverse range of of animal care that we can um so you can see all the smaller animals here lizards and geckos and the, the snakes are currently housed here um, i think there's some more snakes in there um but anyone who is planning to study animal care or even if you just like animals but you you're not going to come and study if you follow nesco animals on instagram they will um they post regular updates of their animals so i think the latest was the, the sheep shearing so you can go and see a before and after um, of them getting a haircut um, so that is the animal area. Someone is asking for VFX, so we'll just shoot across to VFX, uh, art, media and games. So whilst we're here, we'll do the whole art uh, area and media and games and, and everything. So if you plan to study art and design with us, we've got two large studios. This is in the VAPA building, that stands for Visual and Performing Arts. So if you're studying art and design or performing arts, you'll spend time in this building. Um, so that is one of the studios. And the second studio, which is just across the corridor. And there is a bit of an area around there, which you can't quite see at the moment, but there is a, another area, so it does go quite far back as well. You also have a textiles room. So anyone studying fashion, um, then you might, then you'll probably spend a fair amount of time in here. We've got uh, an old school print room with a lot of old school printers that you can use. We also have a dark room. Um, we don't have any images of that. We have a dark room in the main building that you also have access to. Uh, and then we also have the sculpture room, as you can tell from all the uh, plaster of Paris on the floor. <laughs> And on the corridor, we've got a couple of Mac studios for use by art and design students. So this is one of uh, a few Mac suites that we have. Yeah, and we have another one. This is over in the main building. So anyone that's studying creative media, next gen games and VFX, you will spend time in a classroom, either this classroom or one very similar to this classroom. Um, that has uh, a whole suite of Macs in there. We've also got the Games Hub, so anyone doing games, animation, and VFX, we'll spend a bit of time in here. We've got some normal PCs there. This is the dark room in here. We can't see it for obvious reasons. It's a dark room, but it is in there. Um, a row of computers there. And if you go through this door here, we go into the screening room. So as you can see out, it's like a mini cinema. So anybody who, uh, sort of when you have your final project at the end of the year and you watch your highlight reels or whatever it is that you might have put together, um, you can get friends and family in to come and have a look in the screening room. Oh, yes. Okay. Travel. We have um, quite a cool little room. Uh, well, I think it's cool anyway. Um, we have a cabin crew room. Um, so it's essentially kitted out um, like a makeshift little plane area. Um, so this obviously any everything they do on aer aeroplanes, whether it be stewarding or stewardessing or um, any other safety procedures that you have to know if you want to get into the travel sector, you'll come in here and you'll do a bit of practice and role playing along that. It's got all the equipment as well. Um, so they keep the, all the equipment up to date. So any sort of new equipment within the industry will um, aim to be having that here as well. Um, and then this is one of the travel classrooms that you'll spend time in. Um, also, I think public services might spend time in here as well. So you can see it's just a whole host of tables at the front, lots of computers at the back. And at the front, a large screen for anything that your tutor wants to put on there. Um, I'll go back to the crab and room, which you can uh, admire whilst I just carry on through the chat box. Oh, music, yes, let's go and have a look at music. There we are. So uh, a couple of rooms to show you other than just generic classrooms. We've got the recording studio, um, lots of music equipment, so any budding musicians that we might have or singers, 
Um, you're welcome to use any equipment that we may have at the time. Um, you can see in here is um, sort of where all the, uh, uh, the sound boards and everything like that is. And then this is your classroom. So again, um, filled with uh, Max. Uh, you've also got some keyboards and stuff there. Um, so there's plenty of equipment um, that you're using. Obviously, all the software, um, industry standard software, but it will all be installed on these computers um, for you to use when you come and see us. So we've seen plumbing, that was music, animal. Will we start studying in September? Someone has asked. Um, yes, um, unless anything out of our control happens. Um, obviously, we intend to have you all in September as normal um, on site. Uh, so I'm just checking YouTube at the moment. So we've got animal, animal, public services, public services and music. So I've done all those. Um, farm we've looked at, travel we've looked at. I think we've pretty much covered almost every area, haven't we? Let's just have a quick look. Um, oh, hair and beauty. Let's do hair and beauty. So we've got uh, hairdressing salons. We have two of these rooms. Um, you can see there's individual workstations for everybody. Yeah, we'll go up the other end see it from the other side so there's more workstations you've got a whole another side behind here as well so there's plenty of workstations and like i said we've got two of these rooms so you just go through that door there and there's a whole other area and beauty as well so we have two of these rooms as well so you can see they've all got uh, massage beds as well as all the other equipment that you might need for pedicures manicures eyebrow tints eyebrow lashes anything else that's about the extent of my knowledge of beauty treatments um and like I said, we've got two rooms of those as well. Let's just make this last. So we've got construction carpentry. Public services, construction. So someone's asking here that um, they, they've applied for electrical installation um, and they say they don't need to do anything until June, July time. Um, so in the next few weeks or month, you will get um, an email or a phone call or a letter from us um, explaining the enrollment process to you. Um, depending on what course you're on will depend on when you enroll. So there's some that are doing enrollments in June, um, going into July, and then there are others that won't do it until towards the end of August. Um, so if you haven't heard anything from us by the end of July, I would suggest that you give um, advice and guidance a uh, call um, just to check that you haven't missed anything. But if you, if you haven't heard from us in the last month or so um, in regards to your application, don't worry. Um, it's because we, you don't necessarily need to do anything. So anything you would have got off us is just general information for you. Uh, plumbing up down. Uh, I guess student loan. So student loan Friday foundation degree. Yes, you can get a student loan if you just go to the student loans company. Um, you can go and speak to them. And someone was asking if this will be recorded. Yes, it's being streamed to YouTube as well. So there's actually yesterday's currently on YouTube, um, but this one will also um, one of them will be left up um, for viewing. So um, check back on our YouTube later on today or tomorrow, uh, and you'll have access to that. Uh, someone's asked what time do you usually start finishing plumbing um as i did touch on earlier it very much depends some days you'll be in nine and through till five for example on a wednesday you generally finish earlier so you'd usually finish around lunchtime all the other days you could be in from nine till five you could be in 11 till three who knows um really it does vary um but you'll get your timetable when you come along uh, to enroll um just checking is any more questions would it only be practical work all days for catering? Um, no, um, any course that you do here, none of it is all practical. Um, many courses, um, or all courses have a, a theory element. Um, so you could say that probably 70%, 60 to 70% is probably practical um, and 30, 40% is theory, uh, which is like written based work. Um, so you'll have coursework and everything to do. Um, someone's asked when will this just be sent out welcome us to the welcome and induction event if it states it's in may but i've not had anything yet um so the welcome and induction event that you probably may have been informed of um which usually takes place um in june um late june early july that particular event will not be going uh ahead uh 
due to current circumstances. We have the open day on the 26th of June, which I suggest you come to. Um, there will be activities going on in all the subject areas. For you, Some you'll be able to have a go at, others you'll just be able to observe. Um, and you'll be able to talk to the specific curriculum staff who will be able to um, give you more information about exactly on the course. Um, so there won't be an event. You, well, some curriculum areas might do small events, but if, if they do, you'll, you'll hear from us. Um, but I don't think many are. Um, so come along on the 26th of June. Otherwise, um, you won't hear uh, or we won't see you until we ask you to come and enrol with us. Uh, do apprenticeship courses only start in September? Generally, yes, but we do take apprentices on throughout the whole year. So get in touch with the business centre team. Um, if you um, are looking to perhaps start that a bit earlier or later. Um, someone's asking if we still have places for early years foundation degree. Uh, in all honesty, I don't know. Um, I know it's a very popular course. So if you are looking to start that in September, I suggest you get uh, an application in with us ASAP um, so that we can look into that for you. Um, someone's asking about SEND students with learning disabilities. So. If they're studying on a foundations course, they'll be in the Seasons Hub area that I showed you earlier. If they're just a student who has learning support needs, but is studying a mainstream course like motor vehicle, sport, beauty, hair, um, then you'll be in a classroom with everybody, um, with everybody else. Um, depending on what support it is you need, will depend on whether or not um, there is an LSA uh, in that classroom, either for the whole class or specifically for um, one student. Um, so as long as you make us aware of the uh, of the learning support needed, we can then evaluate that um, when they when they join us, and we can get those measures and support in place for you. Uh, how long do you have? Uh, I assume that someone asking how long do you have for a half term? It's usually just a week. Um, uh, I think in October and February. Um, the last couple of years we haven't done a May half term, um, so I expect that will probably be the case next year as well. Easter you get two weeks. Okay, so I think I have reached the end of the messages there. Um, so, uh, so, so what I'm going to do, yes, we do have a summer holidays as well, um, but that's, yeah, we do have some holidays, which is separate to sort of what we call a half term. That's usually about six weeks or so. Um, I'm just going to, jot down some areas, uh, some email addresses for you to contact. So the first one is advice team at Nescot. So that if you have any queries about your application or the course, please email the advice team. If you have any queries about financial support, please contact our student finance team. Sorry, there should be a dot um, after the AC there. Let me retype that. Nescot.ac.uk. And if you have any questions about an apprenticeship, please contact our business centre team at businesscentre at nescot.ac.uk. Um, I will just share the link to our session. I'm just going to have a look back on. Okay. So let me just get the link for you for our upcoming open day. Uh, to question, is, is someone in a wheelchair suitable to go to Nesco? Absolutely. Um, all areas of the college are accessible by wheelchair. Um, so you, you shouldn't have any problems with that whatsoever. Um, I would say the only area that might be a bit tricky is um, animal because it's the farm. So whilst there is a relatively level path, um, it is um, gravelly and not the easiest of terrain. But other than that, every area um, is absolutely accessible. Um, for any student. Um, all the buildings have lifts, um, all other areas that um, are slightly raised have ramps to use. 
And someone's asking if you can do more than one subject in Nescot. If you're studying a full-time course, um, no, you can only do that full-time course. Um, essentially, you won't have time to do another course. The full-time course will pretty much take up all of your time and your spare time for like homework and everything. The only courses you'll do as well as that is if you need to retake maths and English, you'll do maths and English alongside your course. Um, and you'll do that until you're either 19 or until um, you achieve uh, level four or above. Is there anybody who wishes to come to our Saturday event in June? Here is the link. I will share that link over on YouTube as well. So this is a link to our open event coming up in June. And over on YouTube, I'm just sharing those email addresses as well. Yeah, someone's asking uh, level five, is that a good level to go to Nescot? Um, I'm not sure if you mean um, you already have a level five or if you are applying for a level five. Um, either way, it, it very much depends on, on what you want to do. If you want to study a particular course that requires you to have a level five, then obviously it, it, you'll need to have a level five. If you are looking to study um, anything lower than that, then a level five is more than enough to, to get on most courses. Um, but it very much depends on what you what it is you are looking to do. Um, so someone's asked, do we need to come to college on the 26th of June? No, you don't need to come. Um, it is an open event and skills um, showcase. So um, if you want to come and visit the college because you haven't had the opportunity yet this year, um, this is going to pretty much be one of the last opportunities to do that. So come along and you can see the college for real rather than virtually like we've had to do um, over the past year. Um, then I would suggest you come to that event, but it, you don't have to. It's not going to affect your application with us if you don't. That's absolutely fine. And someone's asked, did you say you have to book to go on the open event? Yes, um, for that for that event on the 26th of June, you have to book. So if you go to that link that I have put in the chat there, um, there is a, a form on that page that you need to fill in. Um, and the reason being is because we don't know if we're going to have to limit numbers again or not. So it just helps us keep an eye um, on those numbers um, in case we don't come out of lockdown on the 21st. Um, someone's asked, is there student accommodation? No, there isn't. Not on site. Um, there's plenty of areas in the local area that you might be able to find accommodation. If you contact the student finance team via the email I gave you earlier, they have information about um, local student accommodation. Someone asked if I have a paper copy of the prospectus. We do have paper copies. Um, you can also get it online. Um, all the information is online as, as is what is in the prospectus. If you want a paper copy of the prospectus, um, please email the advice team email and they can send one out to you. Um, someone's asking when do you have to apply for, level, uh, for an electrical apprenticeship level three? Um, the sooner the better. The, the sooner you get your application in, the more chance there is of you getting on the course. Um, if you're doing an apprenticeship, you also need to find an employer that will take you on as an apprentice. Um, but if you get the application into us and then contact the business centre, they might be able to put you in contact with someone. It depends if we have any vacancies that we're aware of. Um, someone's just asking uh, where can they see the recording. So there is a recording of yesterday's on YouTube already. Um, and as, as soon as we finish this, um, this one will be up on YouTube as well. Um, and then um, one will, will eventually get taken down, but for the next few days, both will be up there so you can watch either. Um, someone's asked, how do I apply for animal course? Please go to our website. Um, so if you... I'll just send you the link to animal. So there's the link to animal. So if you select the course of animal studies that you want to do, then you can apply through there. There'll be an apply now button. 
Um, someone's asking, do you need maths and English for access to nursing? Uh, I don't know for sure, but I would imagine so, yes, because um, nursing as it, in itself would involve a lot of maths and certainly English. Um, so someone's asking, do I just search Nescot virtual evening? So if you go to our YouTube channel, just search Nescot um, and it will come up with our YouTube channel and it will be one of the latest videos on there. What happens after you apply for a course in Nescot College? So once you've applied with us, you'll get, um, usually you'd be invited in for a group interview session, but we haven't been able to do those this year. So you'll get sent some information um, and then they'll, they'll look at your application and then they'll be in touch to either offer you, uh, a provisionally offer you a place depending on your grades. Um, and then you'll be invited to enroll uh, later on in the summer. Uh, um, Someone's asked if courses require work experience, how is the place and location determined? So if, say for example, you're doing health and social care, which I think has a work placement one day a week, um, obviously the staff here will help you, but they'll encourage you to find that place yourself. Obviously they have contacts within the industry that will probably be more than willing to take um, students on, but you will be encouraged to find that for yourself with some guidance from us. Okay, guys, that's um, we've just gone past seven o'clock there, so I will have to stop um, now. Someone's asking, just last quick question. Someone's asking, is there going to be taste today's? Um, no, there isn't. Um, if you come on the 26th of June, you'll be able to see everything in action then. Um, but thank you, everyone, um, for joining us tonight. The recording is available on YouTube immediately after this is finished. Um, please come along and see us on the 26th of June. Um, where you can come and see the college for real. Um, thank you everyone for your time and hopefully see you in June or if not in September. Good night everyone. <laughs>